Right. Today I'm looking at this paper, Grokking of Hierarchical Structure in Vanilla Transformers. It's um, out of Stanford uh, and MIT, uh, in, in particular by Chris, uh, Dr. Christopher Manning, who's one of the authors I follow quite often. This paper was written um, back in May of 2023, and it's focusing on this idea of can a transformer model um, figure out and generalize structure in language beyond the training data set that it looks at. Um, and they find that indeed it can, but that there are certain constraints that make it happen. Um, and, and sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. So they look in particular at a couple of data sets, um, one that is very focused on abstract structure. So open and close parentheses of different types and can the model learn to predict the proper closing parenthesis given a prefix. For example, you'd be given this piece here and asked to generate the proper closing parenthesis, which would be this um, closing square bracket. But then also with question formation, can you figure out how to predict the proper word that's going to come next based on what you've seen so far? They, they present a couple of interesting findings, uh, and this is all built on the work that's been done previously on grokking um, by Power et al. back in 2022, where they show that for some types of problems, when you train a transformer model, you will reach a decent enough validation accuracy but the model has not generalized. And if you show it out of domain data that still matches the type of problem, but isn't exactly the same uh, setup as the training, it's not gonna do well. The, the, the model will not do well. But if you continue to train your transformer on the same data that you already have, well beyond when your validation accuracy would tell you to stop, eventually it does figure out how to handle those out of domain uh, problems as well. And so this is the term that they call this grokking, that it's able to figure out kind of almost magically how to solve general versions of the problem that you're giving it, not just the training version of the problem that you're giving it. So they're, they're um, in particular doing this after some previous work that showed that these transformers could not figure out structural um, hierarchical structure in language. And what they find is, okay, well, these previous works that were testing this just didn't test far enough. If they had continued training using the same regiment that they had, they would eventually have reached this um, structural grokking that, uh, that Manning et al. find. So, what they find in particular, they go through all of their setup and the data sets that they use. Um, the models are not complicated. These are relatively small transformer models compared to the traditional uh, LLM that, that everyone talks about these days. And their main results basically are summarized in this subheader. Um, transformers do exhibit structural grokking, but they find that this is only in some certain cases. So to start, they, they show that um, this yellow vertical line here is when you would normally stop training your model. And the solid black line is your validation accuracy. And, and again, I want to point out there are three data sets here that are relevant. There's the training data set that the model is actually learning on. There's the traditional validation data set that the model is being evaluated against, and that's this solid black line. And then there's the generalization data set. And this is new to this grokking uh, concept where you have an out of domain validation data set that still matches your training data. And so this would be something like if you are training a transformer model on um, how to read English text, and in particular, you're training it on uh, poetry, let's say but then you want to see how well does it do on science fiction. It's still English text. It's following the same format and structure, but it's definitely of a different genre. 
Um, and so that's what this generalization accuracy is looking at then. How well do we do on out of domain data that still shares characteristics? And what you would see is, okay, to start, we were stopping and the previous experiments would stop somewhere around this yellow line because the validation accuracy says you're done. But the problem with that is that your generalization hasn't happened yet. And if you continue training on the same training data, you will eventually reach the point where the model has generalized. And this is even more uh, stark in these other uh, data sets. So when you look at the question formation, you would stop with uh, the generalization accuracy somewhere around 30%, even though validation had reached 100. If you continue training, you can get your generalization accuracy up to almost 90% or, or 90 plus. And similarly for this tense inflection task, where you would traditionally stop at 50% generalization accuracy, um, but if you keep going, you will reach something like 80%. So they continue then to explore this, like why is this happening and in what cases does this happen? And they find that this learning, this grokking happens in what they call a U-shaped um, learning style, uh, a learning curve. So if you make your model too small, for example, with two layers, and that's what the x-axis is, the model is not going to be able to grok anything. It might be able to fit your train data set pretty well and even learn pretty well the, the validation data set, but it's not going to be able to generalize. Additionally, if you make your model too large, it won't be able to generalize either. And this is because it's probably learning extra closely the training data set. There's more space for it to remember that, and it doesn't need to generalize, so it, it, it just won't. But if you have, if, if you're in what they call um, the Goldilocks zone, which is not their term, it comes from the previous paper, then you can actually get this generalization to happen. And so what they find is depending on the, the data set, somewhere around four, six, or even eight layers, you will reach this grokking state. And they have here, um, they, they ask this question of, when can we know or expect that grokking will happen? Let's say you have a data set that you're training on and you want to test to say, should I keep training this? My validation accuracy says that I've maxed out the results. But is it worth training for potentially five times as long? If you look at these, um, the, the steps, the x-axis here, it's a non-trivial amount of additional training relative to what you would what you would start with. The um, the graph B here saying that you reach perfect validation accuracy after twenty thousand steps, but it takes three hundred thousand steps. So this is not a just run the experiment and find out. If you could figure out beforehand that this will work, that would be really important. So. They try to model the, the problem a couple of different ways to see what sorts of features might lead to grokking for the structure versus not. Um, and the results here are pretty inconclusive as they describe. The, they are using uh, metrics and features that were discussed previously as potentially relevant, but don't find any real correlation here. As you can tell at the top, the, the ordering of these things is inconsistent with what grokks and what doesn't. And this is their U-shaped laws for grokking, that the, the number of layers follows this U pattern where you succeed in, in some in the middle, but not on either extreme. They uh, follow the traditional pattern of considered harmful here and say early stopping is considered harmful, who knows how many tasks grokking applies to, um, and if we always stop when validation tells us to, we might not be generalizing as well as we could. This is particularly interesting to me with works like the Tiny Llama um, model that was released just in December. They trained a 1 billion parameter model for 3 trillion tokens, where traditional scaling laws would tell you that's not important. You, you should be stopping around um, 1 trillion tokens or maybe 2 trillion tokens like Llama was. 
but they push that further to see what would happen because potentially this early stopping is preventing the model from generalizing. Now the question there is, well, how big of a model relative to the, the data and is just another trillion tokens enough or do we need to actually 10x the number of tokens that we're doing? And, and a 1 billion parameter model, if you trained it for 10 trillion tokens or 20 trillion tokens, then that would grok further than the, the traditional setup. So overall, I think this is a very neat paper. It pushes the expectation beyond just hitting your validation accuracy and stopping. Um, and you should always be considering, does this model generalize beyond the, the simple task that I have for it? So that's why I think this is a particularly interesting paper for people who are actively training models. You want to think about, should you be checking for grokking or not? All right, as I mentioned at the end of my last video, I do have a Discord server that I'm looking to grow with more people who are interested in running experiments like this. What models should we try to make grok and which ones shouldn't we? And if you have any suggestions for other papers to read, let me know.